Aaron Nunez, he's in online marketing and he's going to help you with the art of persuasion. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up. Imagine you are the leader of a movement and you have thousands and thousands of followers and every time you speak, they listen and every time you act, they follow. The question I have for you is how did guys like Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Mahatma Gandhi, how did they get people to take action and follow them? Because I know if you can do that, if you can do that on that scale, then it'd be so easy for you to ask your boss for a raise, to sell your products or services, or to seduce a partner. <laughs> so today we're gonna talk about persuasion and influence, and we're gonna talk about how to use persuasion and influence to get more of what you want. So, <clears throat> like I said, we're gonna use persuasion and influence to show you how to, to make a sale how to attract a partner, and also how to get a raise. So the first key to influence is to always speak in terms of what's in it for them. For example, if you want to get a raise, the worst thing you can say to your boss is you go up to your boss and say, hey boss, I was wondering, I was thinking if I could, if you could give me a raise. That's the worst thing you could say. Instead, be strategic about about that process. The boss, your boss wants to know what value you bring to the company, not what you want. They don't really care what you want. So instead do this. Go to your boss and say, hey, what am, uh, how am I doing right now and how can I excel at my position for the future? So over the next two months, do what, you, do what he says for, for you to do and then track all your progress, track all your results and then quantify those results as best as possible. So you can show your boss the value you bring to the company and then go back and tell him, and ask for what you want. If you want to know if you're doing correct correctly, count the number of times you say you versus I. You know, so don't speak in terms of I just want this, I want that, I could do this, I could do this. Speak in terms of you. So that's a good way to gauge if you're doing it right. The second biggest way to, to use influence and persuasion is to create an emotional response in people. Emotions are everything. Whether you're writing a book, whether you're talking to a friend, whether you're writing a blog, emotions are everything. So, uh, people don't act unless they're emotionally stimulated. For example, this company is selling a dress. They could have talked about the size, the color, etc. Instead, they're giving the perspective from a man's point of view. I watch her glide toward me, the cotton fabric folding around her, the interior lining sliding against her tan body. She shrugs as she passes, smiling as, she, as if she knows her dress spoke to me, but couldn't do anything about it. So the woman can imagine like wearing that dress and what the reaction she's gonna get from guys will be. It's a lot more powerful. This right here is like porno for guys. This works because guys see this and they picture themselves doing it. I mean, I can get off on this all day long. Just this and videos. Here's a, here's a, a, a headline for a nonprofit organization and their headline is, if you don't give, no one will like you. <laughs> that just like speaks directly to your soul, doesn't it? How about this one? If you don't move, you get fat. They're just not beating around the bush. They're just telling you directly. That's, that, makes, that makes me want to go to the gym right now. So the last key to using influence and persuasion is to always ask for what you want. It's called a call to action. So when, the, when you're talking with the boss, say, how can we, what, what can we do to find a number that works for both of us? Instead of asking just like, I want this. You know, what works for both of us? So I'm talking about influence because influence is everywhere in our lives. And you are influencing someone and the people around you, whether you are conscious of it or not. And there's someone who always feels the influence, the effects of your influence. And that person is yourself. So if, I, if you get one thing from this, from this presentation, that is to, to motivate yourself, to influence yourself, to take action, to do something that scares you, to do the thing that you've always wanted to do, but haven't done it because you've been making too many excuses. Andrew Carnegie said, people who are unable to motivate themselves must be content with mediocrity. 
mediocrity. Who wants to be mediocre? I don't. So m persuade yourself, influence yourself, do something that you want to do, do something that scares you, and uh, change the world. My name is Aaron Nunez. Thank you.